Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop, or should I say it's good to be back. It's been a while since I posted a video, and forgive me for that. I've been pushing a lot of work through the shop lately. Also participating in what's called No Shave November or Movember for men's health issues. If you haven't had a recent checkup, go get checked out. Live longer for the people that you love and the people that love you, so go get a checkup. Some of the work that I've been processing through the shop, although a lot of it is the CNC mill work, it has encompassed a lot of different philosophies for work holding and approach, and it's all driven by quantities and material available, cost, time, a dozen different things. First part I'm going to show you is a half of a clamp. Naturally there are two of these that make an entire assembly, and there were several different ways to approach this. When you have a part that's nominal thickness, this is half inch material here, excuse me, it's a half inch part. You can start with a half inch material and then do some of it, change your philosophy on how you're holding that part, swap the clamps, do the other part, and this is what I'm talking about here. If you were doing this out of half inch material, you could not do the whole part all at one time because how are you going to hold the part, right? So if you're clamping it down and you're starting with rectangular material, you can do the outside of the part part of the center, then you'd have to stop, swap your clamps, knock the center out of it, stand it up vertically, and do your holes. Now that's really not a big deal, but when you have dozens of these to do, every time you stop and start swapping clamps, the clock is still ticking and basically that's eating away at your bottom line. So another way to do this, and the way I approached this job, was I used thicker material, and I put on what was called grip stock. Grip stock is when you have a large chunk of remnant material surrounding your part. That's pretty ugly, but you get the idea. And this is the material that you grip in your vise, and it allows you to do the entire part at one shot. Well, not at one shot, but you can access 100% of the perimeter without changing clamps. Now the difference in the cost of the material, because a lot of you are saying, oh, now look how much material you're throwing away. The difference between half inch and five eighths material is about 13 cents a running inch at uh, half by two, five eighths by two material. So for 50 cents, you throw away 50 cents worth of material. Well, time wise, that's about 32 seconds in the machine and uh, I would say that you're not going to be able to stop that machine, blow this part off, swap the clamps, shut the doors, and restart the program in 32 seconds. So it's just not going to happen. Anyway, grip stock view what it is. When you drop a piece of material in your machine for a first side operation, do not tap that material down against your parallels because if the blank you're using is warped, when you tap it down, it'll straighten it out, and you'll feel the parallels will be nice and tight under the part. But as soon as you open up that vise, boing, the part's going to be influenced by the original material condition, and it's going to pop. So don't knock the first side down. Just sit it on the parallels, squeeze it. Now when you do this on a CNC mill, or probably even on a rotary table, which is a home shop kind of thing, which is the way I would do it if I was doing it on a rotary table, that's what you got to do, right? you're going to end up with a chunk of material right here. Because your cutter is going to come across the face and run around that track and do this, you're going to have the same thing back here. You're going to have all these corners on the part from where the cutter ran around and did the job. The one thing you must consider when you run a process like this, whether or not it's on a rotary table or a CNC mill, is what happens to these guys, these corners, when you flip this part over and deck this grip stock off. You do not want these big remnant chunks of material flopping around inside your machine or underneath a spinning cutter. If they get jacked up into the cutter, goodbye. It's going to ruin the part and it's probably going to ruin the cutter and most likely for sure it's going to ruin your day. Anyhow, after you make your profile cut on a part like this, put it up on a bandsaw and remove as much of the garbage material as you can. All goes away. Not all of it, but the majority. 
majority of it. You're still going to have little shelves surrounding your part. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. This is the kind of part you want to feed into the machine for the second op. Now when you flip this part over, and here's the philosophy part of it, whether you're not a uh, production shop or a garage shop, the philosophy is the same. When you turn this part upside down, and, and this particular part, this was only 060 thick. And that's not very thick. That could be influenced by a heavy cutter very easily. So in the next operation, when you machine the part to thickness, make sure that the rotation of the cutter drives all of your thin features against your support features. So we're going to look at the machine from the top for a second. Here's your part. Here's your cutter. Your cutter is going this way. This is sitting in your jaws or your fixture or whatever, however you're holding it. The rotation of this cutter, you want it driving the part against the jaws or against the locating features in your fixture. It's going to give you a better surface finish. It's not going to distort the part. I guarantee it's going to be quieter. It's not going to be ringing like a school bell. So there's your philosophy there. Drive the part against the stationary jaw or against the area of the fixture or soft jaw that has the most surface contact. Beyond that, it is very straightforward. I did film the production of this particular part and there is no narrative so I'm going to insert captions to support what I've just told you here and shown you here. Let's take a walk out to the CNC mill, fire up a couple of parts and show you what I mean.
All right, guys, well, that method of producing a part is what I call a grip stock. And the majority of the time, the amount of material that you're going to throw away versus the time it's going to take to swap clamps, jump clamps, and jerk around that way is definitely going to work in your favor. But be aware that's a one-way part. As soon as you deck the grip stock off of that part, you cannot return that part to the original setup. So be very aware of that and plan your work accordingly. I will post another video very shortly, probably uh, next couple of days, if not sooner, on a technique that I call a dog bone, and that is very helpful. So if you like this one, you got some philosophy out of what I showed you, good, put it in the book. Also watch the one called dog bone. You're going to like what you see. Anyway, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.